Jim, what's your reaction to tonight's uh, result and performance? As always, James, we're disappointed to lose the game. You know, we knew how difficult tonight was going to be. Uh, we came here with a, a system and a formation that we felt would um, deny Rangers space and, um, you know, being compact and being hard to beat and trying to make sure that Vaclav had as little to do as possible. And, you know, I thought we'd done that for large spells, particularly before the goal. Um, but, of course, when the goal goes in just after the half hour mark, then it, it makes life difficult. You know, the important thing tonight was to try and stay in the game for as long as we could. You know, we we have to admit that Rangers are a better team than us. Um, and, you know, if you do come out and try and take the game to them, then they can open you up. And they already have done that numerous occasions here uh, already this season. You know, I think they put five past Aberdeen, five past Hamilton here. Uh, I think they put four or five by Hearts just before the, the winter break. So I didn't want to come here and, and get turned over dramatically and then the heads go down and the boys are going into the next few games low on confidence you know I thought the boys gave a good account of themselves in terms of the shape and the organisation of the team uh, I take full responsibility listen this isn't a, a style of football that I want to be uh, known for or um, I, or I will probably you know ask the players to play again between now and the end of the season it was simply against a very good Rangers team who uh, I've got fantastic players in the forward areas. If you do come out and you take the game to them, they can pick you off, and all of a sudden it can become a very, very long night. You know, I, I was pleased that we managed to stay in the game. We kept the scoreline at one nil for as long as we did, which allowed us then, you know, the last kind of five, ten minutes to to have a little bit of a go, uh, and you know, put more forward-minded players on the pitch. We just wanted an opportunity, and we actually got one from uh, Cammy McPherson. Put a great free kick in. Conor McCarthy managed to lose his marker and you know unfortunately we weren't able to get enough purchase on the header but when you come to places like this or Parkhead you know that's got to be the mindset stay in the game for as long as you can and hope when you do get that one opportunity that you take Obviously Akin and Conor made their debuts on Saturday against Broxburn but given no disrespect to Broxburn the level of opposition it's hard to judge them defensively how did you feel they done tonight? I thought defensively they've done really well. You know, I, I think there's things that we can certainly do better. Um, you know, there was a couple of moments of um, maybe a lapse in concentration. Um, you know, sometimes maybe trying to overplay at times, particularly in the second half when we can probably make a better decision and go and lengthen the game a little bit. But you know, I can't fault them in terms of um, you know their their work rate and their commitment and their organisation and. You know, they're two good lads, two really good young centre halves, and I thought they handled the occasion brilliantly. You know, and Jermaine Defoe obviously he scored the goal, but out with that, um, he's not had a great deal to do. So you know, the, the boys won't come up against um, many better strikers than Jermaine Defoe in this league. So if they can handle him the way they did tonight, then um, you know that bodes well for going forward. And I think in terms of results elsewhere, things kind of went for us tonight. You know, nobody's really gained any ground over us. Yeah, the league table hasn't changed a great deal. Obviously, Hearts have picked up a point, but um, no, I suppose if you are, if we were going to lose tonight, then you probably wouldn't have wanted the results to be any different to what they are. So, um, but look, we're not concerning ourselves with, you know, with, with other teams. You know, it, I genuinely felt today if we could have got in a half time at nil nil or maybe even, you know, our noses in front, then I genuinely felt that we could have took something from the game. The goal is disappointing. Um, you know, we didn't really do enough to stop the ball coming in the box. Uh, it's got a couple of ricochets along the way, and we need to be marking Jermaine Defoe because he is, you know, the main threat. And um, unfortunately, you know, just one lapse in concentration cost us. Back to it on Sunday when Aberdeen come to the Simple Digital Arena. Given the performance levels and obviously beating them earlier in the season, how, how much confidence do you take from those two previous meetings when we faced them on Sunday? Yeah, look, I mean, you know, prior to the winter break, we were playing really well. You know, um, we were on a decent run of form. Um, and you're right, you know, to mention the couple of games that we've had against Aberdeen already, we've done very well. And, you know, obviously beating them early on in the season. And up there, uh, you know, a couple of months ago, we actually should have at least took a point back down the road with us. You know, we missed a penalty late on for the equaliser. But even at nil nil, we had a couple of good opportunities to get our noses in front. But look, Aberdeen are a. A very good team, um, you know. Derek has had them up near the top end of the table for the last number of years, and 
obviously they'll be disappointed with their defeat tonight at home to Motherwell, but they'll be looking to try and bounce back on Sunday against ourselves. Um, we certainly, you know, don't fear playing them. We, we certainly won't be lining up the same way that we did tonight. Um, you know, on both occasions when we played Aberdeen, particularly in the second game, we were very attacking minded. We played on the front foot and I thought we got a lot of joy by doing that. So um, we'll certainly be a little bit more offensive uh, on Sunday than what we were tonight. Yeah, just obviously there was a, dis well, a, a tough moment for Kel McGuinness having to come off after only seven minutes with an injury. How's he and also El Kaidamus who had to come off late on? Well, look, obviously, you know, Kyle is the is the main concern. Um, he's a big player for his captain Zamba and then obviously tonight. Um, so, you know, he's a big part of the team and, um, you know, we're all really disappointed for him. It, it doesn't look great, I have to say. It looks quite serious. Uh, Probably a little bit too early to call just now, whether it's um, medial or, or cruciate, but you know, we'll go for a scan tomorrow and we'll get the results on that one. So, you know, it kind of puts the result, I suppose, in perspective, you know. Um, Kyle's health and well-being is far more important than us losing the game. So hopefully it's not as bad as we as we think and um, hopefully he gets a little bit of luck um, and, and it might not be as long as what we think it's going to be. But Ilkay has got a real sore one on the top of his foot. Uh, he's got a cut on the top of his foot, so again, we'll just need to assess him in the morning. But you know, I was delighted with the winter break because it gave us the opportunity to get boys back fit. And you know, for the first time in a long time, we were able to put on training sessions the last couple of weeks where we had you know 18, 20 players. But um, unfortunately, now you know we're going to at least have Kyle out for a little while and possibly Ilkay as well. So. You know, we'll have to sit down as a group, as a staff tomorrow and see what we're going to do. Obviously I think everyone will send our best wishes to Kyle and we've not had our injury problems to seek this season have we? Um, in terms of players maybe on the way back, Kirk Broadfoot, Kel McAllister, Stephen McGinn, Gary McKenzie, how are they all doing? Yeah, I mean Stephen, uh, Stephen's probably 10 days maybe. Um, Kirk Broadfoot is back training with the lads last couple of weeks but you know, we just need to be careful with him. You know, it's about ten weeks ago since he's done the injury, so we don't want to rush him back too quickly and then for him to break down again. Um, Gary McKenzie's probably looking at another week or so. Kyle McAllister, we hope, is going to join back in uh, next week. So probably Sunday will be too soon, but um, you know, definitely next week he'll be back in with the group playing, uh, training, and um, yeah. So you know, it is what it is. You know, with the the squad is quite tight as it is. When everybody's back fit, then it looks okay. We've got a good 18, 20 players to choose from. But um, when you take two or three players out of it, then all of a sudden we look light again. So we've got plenty of time left in the window uh, to assess the situation. And um, you know, if Kyle is as serious as what we what we think it probably is, then we'll have to look at maybe bringing one in in that position anyway. Just in terms of the window, there's obviously been speculation about players who may be going and then there's obviously the talk about potentially positions where we want players in. What's the latest with both of that, those sort of situations? Well, there's nobody been told uh, by me that they're, that they're leaving the club. You know, sometimes in football you get players who are not happy at the lack of game time and that's understandable. I've been there myself. Um, but, you know, at this moment in time, nobody's come asking to leave. I haven't asked anyone to leave. Uh, you know, we need to add to the squad. It's as simple as that, um, and even now more so after tonight. So, you know, we'll just, uh, as I said, we'll sit down as a as a group of staff tomorrow and and um, have a look at what's out there, and then you know, we'll we'll see what the next week to ten days holds for us.